<laughs> all right. Good morning, everyone. All over your baby. Oh, it's okay. I'm all, you're okay. okay. We're okay. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we have three parents here um, with us today, and then we have a, a couple of you logged in, but this will go out to get, um, it will be recorded, and you can find it on our YouTube. So please follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we do have a Twitter. Ms. Frelis has a TikTok, so you can follow us on that. That would be wonderful. Um, today, our PIC meeting is sponsored by Molina Healthcare of Nevada. Um, so we're going to give uh, her some time to tell us a little bit about it. All right, and then just a reminder of who our um, PIC members are. Of course, Ms. Fairless is our lead principal over Matter Academy East and the lead principal over all three campuses. And I'm Olga Storla, the Community and Family Engagement Director. And we have Ms. R.C. in the back over there. She's talking to parents right now. And then Mr. Luna. Um, and then we also have Ms. McKenna, who is our counselor, and Ms. McDermott, who is our high school assistant principal. <laughs> All right, my dears, a little bit different, so I apologize for the delay. So I'm going to pass it over to uh, Molina Healthcare of Nevada. Right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> my niece, is there anybody who speaks Spanish? There will be, but we can. Uh, okay, so my counterpart that does the interpretation, she's on her way. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Um, I'm Lisa Mariani. I'm the manager for growth and community engagement for Molina Healthcare of Nevada. We are one of the Medicaid plans here in the state. And today I'm going to just share some information about the benefits that we offer. Oh, are you going to handle the? Do you want to? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the benefits that Molina members receive, um, as well as talk a little bit about who we are and what we do. Okay, so we have our vision, mission, and values, and those are the things that guide everything that we do as a company, as a healthcare company. So our vision is to serve the health needs of those who need it most, but are the least able to afford it. And that's where the Medicaid piece comes in. Medicaid serves, I know there's confusion between Medicaid and Medicare. Medicaid serves a population that's low income. There are standards or uh, guidelines that a family or an individual would have to meet to qualify for Medicaid. And I'll go into that a little bit later in the presentation. Um, in a mission-driven corporate culture, our experience in government-sponsored programs allows us to flourish in a highly competitive market. I'll talk a little bit about that too, but we are currently in 19 states across the country. Um, our vision is to improve the health and lives of members covered by government programs. So it's not just Medicaid, although right now in Nevada, we are strictly Medicaid, but in 2023, we'll also expand to Medicare. And then in 2024, we'll have um, one of the Affordable Care Act products with the Nevada Exchange, which is just the the marketplace where you can purchase healthcare coverage if you do not have it currently covered. Um, so our mission is to be the partner and plan of choice, um, to be the low cost leader in government programs, to provide effective, high quality and appropriate access to care and to provide reliable services and a seamless experience for our members. So that means no hiccups in your healthcare from start to finish, um, whatever that journey looks like for you. Our values, we strive to be an exemplary organization. 
We value member-focused care. Everything that we do has the member at the center of what we're doing, whether it's, um, you know, the way that our operations are set up, um, the activities that we do in the community, the organizations that we support and partner with. Um, provider focus provider focused partnerships. So we work very closely with a lot of our providers offices to ensure that they are providing high quality care um, and accessible to our members. Um, the community approach to holistic wellness, um, high quality care and population, uh, the little thing is blocking my, <laughs> my presentation. So um, yeah, population health, that's where we evaluate what's going on in the community so that we can target specific issues um, more effectively and then operational and service excellence. Okay, so Molina's national footprint, as I mentioned earlier, we are in 19 states um, across the country, Nevada being one of the newest ones. We went live on January 1st. Um, we've been in several other states in California. We've been there for a uh, little over 20 years, but Molina has actually been operating as a managed care organization um, covering Medicaid for over 40 years. So that's just a little map that shows where we're at, what products we offer in those different states. Um, and again, as I mentioned, we'll offer a Medicare um, insurance plan in 2023. And then in 2024, we'll expand to the marketplace, which is where you would go to purchase insurance if you weren't, if you weren't eligible for Medicaid or Medicare um, and weren't covered by your employer. Thought I pushed the button. Sorry about that. Okay, and then it went to it once. So let me <laughs> try to scroll back here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, technical difficulties, but I will, uh, we'll just go with it. Okay, so um, some additional benefits. We call them our value added benefits. These are benefits that are above and beyond the basic benefits that all Medicaid plans have to cover. So some of those additional benefits include a free smartphone and service with free talk, text, and international calling to five countries. And those countries are Vietnam, um, North Korea, um, no, sorry, South Korea, Canada, Mexico, and China. Um, we offer additional transportation for any of your social determinants of health services, and we allow two additional family members to go with you. So social determinants are, of health are those circumstances that aren't necessarily directly related to health, but they impact your ability to access um, your healthcare services. So those are things like your education level, um, where you live, um, Oh my gosh, there's so many different ones, uh, your employment. Um, so if, for example, you are a family struggling, sorry, the, the computer screen shifted, so it threw me off for a minute. I thought it advanced. Um, so if your family's struggling um, to make ends meet and you need to access, you know, the services of a food bank, for example, um, we would provide the transportation for you to go to the food bank to get a food box um, so that you can take care of your family in that way. So there's additional things like if you wanted to have help and you working, you were working with an organization that provides job skills, job training, um, we would provide the transportation to that. We also offer free annual Costco membership. Um, that's going to end as of, the, as of the end of this year is December 31st, but we're shifting it to Sam's Club. So as of January 1st, if you didn't enroll in the Costco membership, you are eligible as a Molina member for the um, Sam's Club membership. We also replace lost IDs and birth certificates. Um, we give our members $30 per household per quarter for over-the-counter items that are not covered through your Medicaid pharmacy um, prescription. So sometimes those are things like um, adult diapers, um, certain medications that you can get over-the-counter, um, and things like that. So it's $30 per household per quarter. So, you know, not too bad, $120 a year. Um, up to $400 in gift card incentives for completing your certain 
for completing certain screenings and immunizations. So I know um, all of you are moms and dads that have little ones that probably have to get your immunizations on an annual basis. You can get rewarded um, with a gift card for doing that. Um, so there's a phone number and I'll share the materials. I'll send an email um, afterward to the folks here um, at Matter Academy so that they can send you all of the materials. We do have them in English and Spanish. Um, but you can earn gift cards just for taking care, for being proactive and taking care of yourself and your family. Um, we also offer an additional $100 um, in a vision benefit so that you can upgrade your glasses. And it's um, for members over 21, so the adults in the family. Uh, we also cover testing fees for GED or HiSET. So if you know anyone who needs to do that, um, and then I will also throw in, it's not on here, we don't really talk about it too much, but um, when you pass your GED or high set, we do give you a $50 gift card for passing it. It's just kind of a little way to say congratulations. Question. Sure. On um, your slide, it said um, meals are delivered for pregnant or post. Pardon? How long is that? Six weeks. Yeah. That's good. For yes. So, oh, it just advanced again. It didn't stop on that slide. Okay. Okay, there we go. Yep. That was up on our screen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't see your other screen. We, oh, okay. Just been looking at this it, one. Yeah, I jumped forward to the other screen, so it skipped <laughs> this one. So um, we have healthy rewards for moms and kids. So these are the ones that are specific to the families that I think most of you folks will be interested in. Um, so a hundred dollar gift card for moms to be um, who attend one of our baby showers. We've been doing them online um, every other month. And um, we share information about, um, you know, myths about pregnancy. We share information about postpartum depression and some of the symptoms of that. Um, and then if, when you participate, we also play games online, which is really fun. Um, it's very engaging. Um, and it's been a lot of, um, we've had a lot more engagement over the, the more recent months as people are becoming more familiar with Melina and realizing that this is a wonderful benefit for them. Um, we also do the home delivered meals for pregnant moms for, um, or postpartum moms. That's for six weeks after the baby is born. Um, Pacify pregnancy support app offering lactation consultant, gift box, and other support resources. So, um, it's an app on your phone. You download it, you sign up, you register, um, it connects with your um, your obstetrician and um, the pediatrician that will be taking care of your child as well. And then, you know, the, on the back end, the team will follow up um, with all of the information that you're inputting. Um, but there's lots of resources on there for you. They do have the information in English and Spanish. Um, we also offer allergy-free maps mattress cover and pillowcase after the completion of a breathe with ease program. It's primarily focused on asthma and um, respiratory illnesses. Um, we offer a free car seat or booster seat for pregnant moms. Um, most folks are picking the car seat that has the little baby carrier in it because, you know, when you come home, you want something that you can use right away. Um, we offer an electric best breast pump for moms with a baby in the NICU. That one is expanding to all new moms um, as of January 1st, 2023. We also cover Boys and Girls Club memberships. That's for any of the clubhouses in um, Southern Nevada. So no matter what part of the Valley you live in, if there's a Boys and Girls Club near you, um, you're able as a Molina member to take your children there as long as they're enrolled in Molina and their annual membership will be covered. Um, and then we also cover free uh, sports or school physicals that are required. I'm almost afraid to click it again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just controlling. It's just controlling that. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I'm going to shift around a little bit so that I can follow that one. Um, okay, so we covered that. Okay, so Molina case management. So this is connected to that. Are they both? Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, I think these are the same. Um, so we have a case management team that's really 
different than our counterparts and our competitors, which, you know, the other health plans. We use an integrated care model and its core competencies, um, which I, I'll get into a little bit here on this screen. Um, our case management staff uses a member-centric approach. As I mentioned earlier, everything that we do is with the member um, in mind. So everything we do, we build around the member and what the members need. Um, and we take that approach so that we can address the members' needs from a holistic standpoint, meaning from all angles, not just from the healthcare perspective, like there's a weird shadow behind me. You guys might not be able to see. Um, so we take that approach from like the holistic perspective, right? The whole person looking at what are their circumstances, what are some of those barriers that they might be encountering. Um, so the case management is a vital part of the healthcare delivery system, right? If you have a chronic condition, if your child has a chronic condition, um, then you want to make sure that you have the support of as many people as possible to get your child the care or yourself the care that you need. So through this system, we have um, it's this various process. The first one is the assessment, looking at, you know, what is the situation? What is the condition? Um, and then the planning, what are the next steps that we have to take to move forward and help whoever it is that's dealing with this, this situation? The facilitation, that just means getting the right people to the table, um, coordinating with the right um, providers that might need to be involved as well as any of the other case managers that need to be there. And then an evaluation. So looking at everything, all the information that we've gathered and what is the best approach for that individual's care. Um, of course, there's always the advocacy and that's where my team, um, myself and our social determinants of health team comes in because we have access to the resources that would be available to you in the community. So I don't know if this is going to. Okay. Um, it's not advancing there. So <laughs> let's try the target. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So the case management tools, the health risk assessment, that's the first thing you call, you'll talk to one of the case managers and they'll ask you questions about what's going on and how can they help. Um, so it's a comprehensive, there's a lot of questions that they ask you about so that they understand the circumstances that are, that you're dealing with. Um, so that we can make sure that if you need additional supports, if you're housing insecure, if you're worried about paying rent, that we can connect you with organizations that can help support you with that. And so it's a comprehensive assessment of the member's individualized health and psychosocial needs. Um, so that's just fancy talk for the, the outside circumstances that you're dealing with. Um, but it's not limited to the assessment of physical and behavioral health um, conditions, substance use, uh, medication use, functional and caregiver needs. It's kind of looking at all of those things. So that's why it's kind of a, a longer um, assessment. There's a lot of questions that you'll be asked, um, but it's because we want to make sure that we are offering all of the, the supports that you will need. And then we have a condition specific assessment. This one is um, specific to the physical or the mental emotional situation that you are dealing with. And that's when you get assigned to a specific case manager in that arena. So if it's, you know, um, depression or, um, you know, things like that, then you'll be assigned to somebody who's a behavioral health case manager. If it's more physical, say you're diagnosed with diabetes, um, then you will have um, a one of our clinical operations case managers. Then we develop the indiv individualized care plans and we have um, what we call an inter interdisciplinary care team who will all work together from those different departments to make sure that you are being um, given all of the supports that you need, that you're being connected to the right providers, um, that the providers are accessible and available to you. Okay. So um, within our case management team, we have a... These are the folks that are that make up our case management team. I don't want to get too technical, um, but we have the case manager, the person that you'll be working with individually, one-on-one. -on -one. We have a transition of care coach. So that is a clinical staff person that's responsible for reducing admissions and readmissions. Um, they work to make sure that, you know, if you're in the hospital for any length of time, as you are 
you know, released back um, to your home, to your your private personal life and time that you have the supports that you need during that transition. Um, you know, if for whatever reason, um, you know, you need various different supports, that transition of care coach will make sure that you are connected to that. Um, and then we have community connectors. They work primarily with um, our, uh, most of our nonprofit partners, um, as well as our members. So those are the ones that might need, um, might not have a chronic condition necessarily, but they need the, the other social supports. So they need the housing assistance. They need the job skills training. They need a food bank assistance. Um, so that's what the community connector does. And then the member health assessor is someone who, um, just kind of evaluates the overall condition of um, the programs that we're offering and um, develops health education based off of what those needs are um, for our members. Um, so, you know, if you live in a food desert, an area where you don't have access to healthy fruits and vegetables, you know, you're limited in what's available to you. And so we might develop um, a health education program focused on nutrition or how to work with the foods that are common in your area um, so that you can at least try to make healthier meals for your family. Okay. And then um, on this next slide, that is the contact information. You're all, from my understanding, you're all going to be sent a copy of this PowerPoint. Victoria also has one in Spanish that she um, did. So we'll send that one as well. But this is for behavioral health. So if you have any um, mental health issues, if you have um, any conditions that you think you want to have either yourself or your children assessed for, um, our contact, if you're a Molina member, is Valerie Wilcox. She oversees the Children's Behavioral Health Services um, for Molina Healthcare of Nevada. Can you do it too low? Okay. And then um, I briefly touched on the social determinants of health team. Sorry, I'm trying to be mindful of time. I know that there's other things that you folks want to talk about and learn about. So the social determinants of health team, they're the ones that work with, um, with us, as well as a lot of the community-based organizations and social service agencies in the community to provide those wraparound supports. Um, we have a manager who oversees the entire team, and that went forward. Oh, uh-oh. Okay. Sorry, it jumped uh, ahead, probably catching up for all the clicks that I was doing earlier. Um, so our, the manager oversees the team. So we have an employment specialist. We have a housing specialist. We have a justice, justice system liaison, um, a chemical dependency counselor, and peer support specialist. Peer support specialists focus primarily on the, the, um, the folks that um, may have at one point had a substance use disorder um, and you know, they're, they're focused on their sobriety, but they might need a little bit more of that support. Um, not quite as much as someone who would be working with our chemical dependency counselor, but just, you know, kind of, um, being able to check in and, and maintain their sobriety. Okay. So there's a few things that we think. Okay. So I think you folks are seeing, Okay. They're not um, connected, so apologies if it looks like I'm discombobulated. Um, okay, so there are a few things that we think makes um, Molina stand out from our competitors. Um, one of the most important to me is that you can actually choose to have a specialist as your primary care physician. You don't have to have a primary care doctor. You don't have to have a family health doctor. You, if you have a chronic condition um, and you are seeing a cardiologist, for example, that cardiologist or that OBGYN or whatever your situation can serve as your primary care physician. Um, we are the only health plan that offers that. Um, you can select a behavioral health provider from the Molina Open Network. What that means is you're not locked into one clinic or one facility for behavioral health services. We have providers all throughout the Valley. We have some that are part of clinics or, um, you know, uh, part of networks, um, but you can select anyone. So if you find one that's close to home that you really like going to, um, chances are high that we have them in our network. And if we don't, we can certainly 
add them to our network. Um, we can work with them, but you can choose any behavioral health provider. You don't have to go to one location. Um, you can also connect with a children's behavioral health case manager. Um, if your child is experiencing depression, right? We know COVID has hit our kids really hard. Um, a lot of them being, um, you know, having to learn online and not engage with their, their friends as often it's affected a lot of our children. So, um, you can connect your, your child with a behavioral health case manager who will help you identify resources to support them. Um, you know, we can also do the um, connect with social determinants of health team um, for housing assistance, for employment, for jail transitions. Um, you can connect with a community connector. I didn't have them on the other list earlier, I don't think. Um, so, but they can connect you with resources like SNAP, right? The Supplemental N Nutrition Assistance Program. Um, they can connect you with food banks or other social supports that you might need. And then you can work with our team, the community engagement team, so that we can help identify resources, um, you know, for whatever it is that you might need. And I'm just going to touch on this really quickly. You'll all see this, but this is the federal poverty level chart. This is what determines eligibility for different government programs. So Nevada Medicaid um, is in that first column and that's what the income level would have to be to qualify for Medicaid. So if you're not sure, you can um, reach out to some folks. I have them on another slide that can help determine whether or not you're eligible for Medicaid. But if you know what your gross income is um, per month, um, that information might help you right there. And that's the eligibility level for all of 2023. And I think it's actually going to remain in effect until April of 2024. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's eligible. It's sorry. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is the current level for 2022 um, through April of 2023. And then in April, they'll update it again, um, which they do about every April. Um, so it might, it's going to go up. We, we've seen it go up consistently over the last few years. Okay, so applying for Medicaid in Nevada. I'm not going to run through all of these sites, um, but you will have access to all of these links. So if you want to apply for Medicaid, you can check out Access Nevada. Um, it is the main page. You'll have to create an account and input all of your information. You can apply for Medicaid either by mail. Um, there's a form that you can print and fill out, um, or you can do it in person at the Division of Welfare and Supportive Services offices. So I included the list, um, the link to the list um, down below the application that you could print. There's also in-person assister organizations. These are organizations that um, have trained their staff through the state to be able to help walk you through the Medicaid application because there are some parts where it's 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 difficult. It's a long application, um, but it's worth it to take the time and to get the help that you need um, if that's the situation that you're in. But I included the phone numbers. So if you want to just, instead of going to DWSS, if you want to go to one of the local organizations, you can call them and they will be able to help you out. And then if anybody's interested in just the general Medicaid benefits, not pulling towards Molina or any of the other health plans, um, Nevada Medicaid has created a brochure that they call the peace of mind brochure. Um, and it has really great information. So the link is there as well. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to talk about Medicaid redetermination, we are coming up on the end of the public health emergency. It was extended officially on April 16th of 2022. Um, and right now it looks like uh, the beginning of um, November, they're going to reevaluate whether or not they want to extend it. Um, and it sounds like they're not going to extend the public health emergency for another, you know, four to six months. So that means if you are enrolled in any government program, not just Medicaid, but any government program, you are going to want to make sure that you have all of your contact information updated. If you are on a government um, program and you don't update your information and your information isn't correct or current, they're going to send you a letter 
um, asking you to update all of your information to determine your eligibility. So that's where we get the redetermination term from. Um, so if you don't get that information and you don't update, you know, your your address, um, you know, your income or your housing situation, you are at risk of losing your benefits. Again, it's not just for Medicaid, but that's the one that I'm going to focus on. So all it takes is you logging in to your Medicaid portal, making sure that your contact information, name, address, email, phone number, update all of it. Um, if you don't have a phone, uh, phone number or stable housing, include an email um, because they are trying always to get in touch with everybody. If you have any questions, you can call the 800 number that's on the, the bottom of this slide. Okay. So um, again, I'm Lisa. I'm going to add, before I email this over, I'm going to add um, Victoria's information. Victoria is our interpreter um, for today. Um, so we'll we'll make sure to send the Spanish version of this presentation as well. Um, so thank you. Are there any questions? Do we open it for questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. So we'll also be posting this, and um, we have some more parents, so I'm not going to sit down. But we'll also be posting this to our YouTube, and we'll be including the links to the information as well as the Spanish yeah. portion of it. Did you want to say anything in Spanish? Oh, I'm going to pass it over. To Perdón, estaba en otro Matter Academy. So, me llamo Victoria Alejandra. Estoy trabajando con Molina Healthcare. Para las personas que tienen unas preguntas, le vamos a mandar esta presentación en español. Mi número de teléfono y correo electrónico va a estar, va a estar allí también. So, si tienen unas preguntas de Medicaid, los beneficios que están elegibles, nomás mándenme un um, correo electrónico, me llaman y nosotros podemos hablar de eso. Um, ya es todo. So, que tengan un buen día. Adiós. Thank you. All right, so let's get started with our pink meeting. We have Mr. Luna who joined us now and um, will be translated. And we have Ms. RC in the back and our team in the back there. Um, can everybody hear me okay if I'm standing here? Buenos días. Vamos a empezar con nuestra junta uh, de padres involucrados aquí en, la, en nuestra escuela. Uh, si nos pueden escuchar muy bien. Muchas gracias. So we do hold our pick meetings to involve you all in everything that's happening, anything that happened, anything that's going to happen. Um, so we welcome you all. We do this once a month. Um, and um, we are going to send out some information just to see what times work best for you all. If you should you know, have it at eight, switch it tonight, switch it to the afternoon. So we'll be sending um, out that information today. Entonces, esta junta la tenemos cada mes para involucrar los padres aquí con nosotros. Uh, también vamos a mandar una información, un cuestionario, si es mejor tenerlo ahorita a las 8 de la mañana, a las 9, a las 10. O si a lo mejor es mejor tenerlo después en, en la tarde para ver qué horarios está mejor para los padres. So some of the um, events that we've had uh, the last month, um, it was suicide awareness in our last pick meeting. We did have some community partners that came in and spoke about that. Um, we also had picture day. Those were for our fall um, fall pictures for our yearbook. Um, go ahead. Uno de los eventos que tuvimos el, el mes pasado, el mes pasado fue uh, atención al suicidio. Entonces, uh, también tuvimos el mes pasado las fotos de los estudiantes. Eso fue el mes pasado. Uh, we also had a readathon fundraiser that was a huge success. Miss RC and Mr. Um, it was actually a whole team of them that uh, put on the readathon. It was a fundraiser. So these events help us um, with lots of things throughout the school, right? I mean, we need help with transportation. We need help with all kinds of um, different things that were not provided with funds from the state. Entonces, también el mes pasado tuvimos un evento que es el de lectura. Entonces, ese evento de lectura fue para recaudar fondos para la escuela 
¿Cómo se usan los fondos para cuando los niños van en excursiones, para llevar a los niños o los estudiantes que, que juegan deportes para que vayan a los otros estadios? Y eso. And then we also had our Noble Knights Awards, um, and that's always for our students that recognize for following the um, Matter 5, which the kids are really good about knowing that. So if you have any questions, you ask your children. They're really good about that. We had the Pep Rally, Homecoming Football Game. The Homecoming was a, a great success as well. They did really well. And then currently we're doing Doing, celebrating the week of respect that's taking place during um, their SEL classes. Y también el mes pasado tuvimos, uh, le dimos un reconocimiento a los estudiantes que están haciendo buen trabajo en lo que queremos que los estudiantes, que se llama Matter 5, que los estudiantes uh, aprendan aquí con nosotros. También tuvimos uh, el, el juego de fútbol americano, el baile que se llama Homecoming, que fue, estuvo muy bien. Um, so some of our future events, and I'm not going to go through each one. Will you s s click on to the next one, Miss McKenna? But let me just highlight some of the important ones. So tonight we have the 99 dance. <laughs> if you if you see that, that's for K through fifth grade, um, and you can still purchase those tickets at the front desk. Um, next week we don't have. Um, school on Monday and Tuesday. That's for te parent teacher conferences. You can begin to schedule those with your um, teachers. You don't have to wait until um, next week. Ah, uh, los eventos que vamos a tener para octubre. Uh, hoy, como puede ver, aquí está todo decorado porque va a haber un evento para los estudiantes de kinder a, a quinto grado uh -huh. uh, que, que se llama. It's 99. 99. Que van a venir en pijamas. Que van a venir en pijamas, exactamente. <laughs> Uh, y también el 10 y el 11 no va a haber escuela. El 10 va a ser uh, un día para nosotros, para los que trabajamos aquí. El 11 va a ser las conferencias con los padres. Puede ya usted como padre a preguntarle al, al maestro para que se coordine, para que haga esa conferencia con el maestro. Yes. No, yeah, everything de the todos los grados. Una pregunta para los de la high school, este, ¿tienen que ver también uno con el maestro a la conferencia? ¿Cómo does the high school uh, parent teacher conference work? Do, do they have to come and meet with all the parents? Or how does that work? Um, I actually, I think for the, um, I believe for the, I, I don't know. For high school only if they were having issues. That's what I thought. Right. So for the high school, right. Right. So what we were told is, that, like you said, um, if they do have a low grade, una de una F. Um, Prácticamente, si su estudiante está teniendo problemas en una materia donde tiene una calificación muy baja, o usted tiene muchas preguntas referente a ese maestro o a esa maestra, entonces usted puede uh, decir que usted quiere venir a, a tener esa, esa conferencia con ese específico maestro. Pero si su estudiante tiene buenas notas, no es necesario que usted venga. Porque pues, ellos tienen otros maestros. Sí, yo le preguntaré eso porque pues, supone que hay que para conferencia para que uno padre venga. Todos, pero ahora le preguntas. Si no están bien, lo vengo. No, si, si, mal, si, si se están bien, tienen buenas notas, usted está feliz. Okay. No, pero si hay una materia donde usted está preocupada por su hijo o hija, entonces sí tiene que, uh, sería mejor que tuviera esa cita con ese maestro o maestra para ver en qué necesita ayuda su, su estudiante. Um, and then for our high school building, we're so excited, finally, for getting our high school building. So our middle schoolers will be, um, eighth graders, some of them will be moving over to that building. Um, no more classrooms in the gym. So everybody is super excited. Um, El 17, we, estamos muy, muy, muy contentos de que el 17 ya se va a abrir a la, de, la preparatoria que tenemos. Entonces, para el 17 ya vamos a tener los de kinder a quinto grado, los de intermedio y luego ya los de high school o los de la prepa ya van a tener sus propias clases. So they actually move in on the 12th, but the 17th we're inviting parents and families to come in and see it. It's not going to be beautifully decorated, maybe some, maybe not, but they're in the building and we'd like to invite you all Entonces, to just come and check it out. El 12 es cuando los estudiantes y todos nosotros ya vamos a empezar a tener clases en ese edificio. El 17 vamos a invitar a todos los padres para que vengan y vean el edificio. Ah, va a estar medio decorado. Ahorita estamos moviendo todo, entonces si no está tan tan decorado, 
Disculpen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we well, have that in Spanish. On the 26th <laughs> is our um, fall festival, and that is going to take place uh, in the high school and middle school quad area. Uh, because as you know, our uh, field is still under construction, but we're very excited to have it there and break in in our new quad area. And I think it's going to be amazing. So we're excited. El 26, tenemos el Festival de Otoño de 4 de la tarde a 6 de la, y media de la tarde. Va a estar atrás del edificio, en el nuevo edificio y atrás de también del edificio intermediario. Uh, todavía no tenemos nuestros campos de fútbol. Es por, es, por esa razón que todavía no los podemos tener ahí. Um, and we will be um, reaching out for parent volunteers for that because, as always, we need help with um, the setup. I think it's going to be a huge success. Miss RC has gotten quite a bit of our community partners to sponsor the event, so they'll be sponsoring a DJ as well as some bouncy houses, and we'll have some community resources. We'll also have the, um, I guess it's a vampire blood drive, <laughs> so they'll be here too. Um, so it, it's just going to be a great event. All the grade levels are going to be involved. That's it. Ese festival de otoño es para todos los grados, entonces va a haber muchos estudiantes. Si usted como padre quiere ser un voluntario, está bienvenido, bienvenida para que nos ayude. Necesitamos mucha ayuda. A uh, todos estamos trabajando muy duro. Uh, ya tenemos varios uh, organizaciones que nos van a ayudar y si usted quiere ayudar puede hablar con, con uno de nosotros para que los pongamos en la lista. So Nevada Day no school as usual and then we have Halloween, well, the students will be released early. El 28 no hay uh, escuela por Nevada Day. El 31 va a ser Halloween, entonces van a salir los estudiantes un poquito más temprano, las 11.45. Um, and then one thing that we spoke about yesterday with uh, our counseling team, our admin team, is um, in November we would like to put on a college night for our juniors, soon to be, se well, not soon, but almost seniors, um, just to prepare all our parents, all of our families, kind of guide them through. Ms. R.C., do you want to talk about that? I know that you were um, in the meeting yesterday, but really put on a college night. I think this one's going to be kind of like a, a first one, and then they want to do a big one in March, but I'll let her talk about that. Entonces, el 9 de noviembre, queremos uh, iniciar o empezar una noche de colegio. Prácticamente lo que se va a hacer que se va a dar información referente a los colegios. La señora Arce va a hablar un poquito referente a qué se va a tratar esta noche. Hi guys, good morning. I'm Miss RC. Um, yeah, so we're planning on doing a college fair, um, a, like kind of like a soft launch in November and then our big one in March. Um, our November one is going to be, you know, just, um, I guess, just kind of planting the seed in um, our parents and our students' minds of, you know, preparing and getting ready for college, of what FAFSA looks like, of the dates that we should be um, um, you know, putting on our calendar and looking out for. And then um, our hope is the one in March, we're going to have, you know, a ton of different colleges, not just the colleges here in Nevada, but colleges from out of state um, be present here on campus. Um, so our students and parents can tour the um, colleges and not just colleges. We're actually uh, trying to have, you know, um, military recruiters here, um, technical schools here, um, different avenues for our students to um, look into um, after they graduate. Entonces, lo que dijo la señora Arce ahorita, En noviembre 9 va a ser prácticamente el inicio o la primera junta, donde se va a dar información donde los préstamos para los colegios, las fechas que uno tiene que, que tener en cuenta, como qué fecha tengo que meter mi aplicación, en qué fecha tengo que hacer esto, en qué fecha tengo que hacer otro. ¿verdad? Si usted tiene estudiantes de 10, de 11 grados, prácticamente ya va a estar en 12 para el siguiente año. Entonces es muy importante que esas fechas usted ya sepa. Que, en qué fecha que se tiene que hacer. Para en marzo es donde vamos a invitar a colegios, no solamente aquí de Nevada, sino de diferentes estados, para que den sus folletos, para que den su información, para que los estudiantes y usted como padre o madre también sepa, oh, en dónde le gustaría a mi estudiante, qué necesita mi estudiante para ir a ese específico colegio, ahí va a estar un representante diciéndole qué es lo que va a necesitar. Es muy, muy bueno. Yeah, thank you. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was for the fall festival, we are inviting parents to do a decorate their trunk for the trunk retreat. We sent out a form for that to sign up. And then if you need help with candy, let us know. Or if you'd like to provide some and donate some, um, that would be wonderful. You can send that with your student or drop it off at the front desk. Para los padres uh, en el festival de otoño, si usted quiere uh, decorar su carro o la parte atrás de su carro, 
Nosotros le juegan la cajuela de su carro, gracias. <risa> Usted le puede dar como, uh, puede traer como dulces, decoraciones así, que se vea bonito para los estudiantes. Si quieren, si usted quiere dar dulces, si quiere ayudarnos con eso. Okay, and we have a couple uh, questions from our last pick meeting. Um, Tenemos dos preguntas de la junta pasada que tuvimos en, en septiembre. So the first one is, how can we know if our children pass the SBAC test? ¿Cómo podemos saber si nuestros estu estudiantes uh, pasaron el examen al final del año que se llama SBAC? Uh, they sent us the uh, scores um, not too long ago. I think it was just, I think like last week. Um, but the admin team did say that it is going out. They're going out this week. Y apenas nos dieron los resultados de ese examen hace como una semana. El grupo de administración va a mandar cómo le fue a su, a su estudiante. En esta, aquí viene. Uh -huh. Y de nuevo, el SBAC es nada más para los de kinder a quinto grado. Entonces, los de, kinder? Los... No, no, es third. Es third through. Third through fifth. El ocho, los niños estaban mandando la carta a la casa. Third through. Oh, sí, sí, the S back? Okay, okay. No, it is three, three, three. Not okay. in the mail. Not in the mail. No, you'll get them in the mail. Yeah. Le, le va a llegar una carta como uno de los padres ya nos dijo que ya le llegó la carta a su dirección. Entonces le va a llegar la carta con a a ver cómo le fue con el resultado de ese examen y ojalá que le llegue una buena carta. So next question: For what date do you think that the fields for sports practice will be ready? ¿Para qué fecha creen ustedes que las, las canchas de fútbol y para hacer diferentes deportes allá atrás van a estar listas? So we were told February, Nos but... dijeron en febrero, <laughs> pero usted sabe cómo va eso. Let's shoot for spring, so let's, let's hope for spring. Entonces, eh, estamos con los dedos cruzados que ojalá sea para... para el febrero, marzo, alrededor de ahí. Uh -huh. But, I mean, it could be very promising. We weren't supposed to get the high school building until um, a year from now, and we got it a whole year earlier, so. And y el like edificio months, de la right? preparatoria <laughs> nos lo dieron súper rápido, y ojalá también queremos que las canchas de los deportes también nos las den súper rápido. So we're going to go to the questions in the chat. Y vamos a ver las, las preguntas que nos pusieron aquí a través de la computadora para esta junta. So the first question, um, La pregunta, and I think, I think everybody can see this, but it's um, a parent asking if we consider um, on events like today where students have to wear pajamas, can you please consider allowing them to wear the pajamas to school where there, uh, where there be adult supervision? So um, for this dance, we are requiring parents to come with the student. The student is not allowed to come without a parent. Um, and as for the pajamas, I think we did talk about that, but with... Um, with the, with the change of everything in the buildings and we kind of didn't want to add any more disruption to um, their day. So we did not allow them to wear their pajamas to school. Entonces, prácticamente la pregunta fue qué va a suceder uh, con el evento de pijamas que va a haber para los estudiantes de kinder a quinto grado, que si pueden nada más venir con sus pijamas y no tener, tener que cambiarse y que va, si va a haber supervisión durante el, el baile o el evento que van a tener. Uh, lo primero es que sí va a haber supervisión porque los estudiantes no pueden venir sin los padres porque es de kinder a quinto grado, los niños todavía están muy chiquitos, entonces si quiere traer a su estudiante tiene que venir y con su estudiante uh, todavía se tienen que traer el uniforme y luego cambiarse a sus pijamas. Uh, all right, and then I think, Janelle, I think your question is regarding the college night. I'll let Miss R.C. answer this. Will other grade levels be able to join? I have a freshman, and she would love to have all the information to help her prep. La pregunta prácticamente es uh, referente a la, no la noche de colegio. La pregunta es, ¿otros grados pueden estar ahí? No solamente 10 y 11, porque mi niña está en grado 9 y ya le gustaría estar uh, saber un poquito de cómo cuál es el proceso para uh, aplicar a los colegios y eso. Uh, that's a great question. Um, I actually, you know what, that's, I, I want to say that we're going to open it up to everybody. Um, anybody, you know, um, in through our middle school and a high school um, that are interested in coming, the more the merrier, that we're welcome to have them. I think it's really great that um, our younger students are thinking forward about their future, and if they want to come and join us at the college night, I would absolutely love that. Ah, la respuesta es, más probablemente es que sí, que los estudiantes de noveno hasta de octavo grado 
que sí ya están interesados, los que están planeando, pensando cuál es el proceso para el colegio y también para los padres, para que los padres estén informados de cuál va a ser el proceso. Entonces, lo más probable es que sí, que uh, queremos que todos los grados vengan, los grados ya más altos, para que sepan un poquito de cómo, de cómo se va a hacer. Um, so the next question, I invited Miss uh, Miss Parker. <laughs> Sorry about that. To answer the question. Ah, la siguiente pregunta es una de las asistentes directoras que va a responder a la pregunta. And the next question. Multiple parents were concerned about the lack of use in class dojo. Um, yes, we did reach out to teachers. Um, can you be specific with the grade level, though, so I can um, Maybe send revisit? Yeah, if you'll send a private message and let me know what grade level. But all teachers should be utilizing class dojo as far as communicating. La pregunta fue que nos escribieron aquí. La vez pasada, en septiembre, hubo una madre que... Uh, que tuvo una pregunta referente a Class Dojo. Es la aplicación donde los, los maestros, específicamente más de, de kinder a quinto grado, les mandan mensaje a los padres y se comunican con los padres. La pregunta fue, ¿cómo, cómo podemos hacer para que los maestros nos contesten más rápido o haya más comunicación a través de eso? La respuesta de la directora fue, si me puedes mandar un mensaje diciéndome uh, específicamente en qué grado, cuál maestro, para, para poder hablar con ese maestro. Porque sí es importante que haga más comunicación entre los uh, maestros con los padres. Y, de nuevo, en esos grados es, se usa mucho ClassDojo. ClassDojo, that's not for high school, right? No. No, no that's for the lower grades. Yeah, the lower grades. Did you all have any questions here? Uh, alguna pregunta aquí para nosotros? Hi there. Um, for the um, new high school building, mm -hmm. are the classes going to stay relatively small or are they going to be a big influx of students? Do you mean class size? Mm -hmm. No, so we are only allowed to accept so many students. Um, and Ms. Fairless, if she has to accept another student she always communicates with the teacher prior to taking another student sometimes that happens if there is a sibling that is just maybe one student behind and we're trying to get the whole family in she will speak to that grade level and make sure that they are okay with handling but other than that we're only um, allowed to take so many students per class which is isn't it like 20 something something like that yeah for high school I think the high school numbers, it, it kind of depends, like, if it's an elective class and yeah, different things right like that. Yeah, right now they're pretty low. Yeah. That's why I was asking, because you guys were moving into a new building, which is more spacious, if there's going yeah. to be an influx. No, well, I mean, they're just moving their, their I mean, they're yeah. just yeah. moving physically, but not changing classrooms yeah. or anything yeah. like that. Okay. If anything, they're having more space. Yeah. But, yeah, no, not, not an enrollment, increase in enrollment, no. Okay. La pregunta que tuvimos aquí de uno de los padres, uh, ahorita que se van a volver a la nueva, al nuevo edificio de la preparatoria, ¿significa que los, las clases van a tener más estudiantes? Uh, exactamente no va a haber más estudiantes, nos vamos a mover a un nuevo edificio, pero no significa que vamos a, a agarrar más estudiantes. Nosotros tenemos un límite que, que tenemos de grado 9, grado 10 y grado 11. Entonces, no significa que vamos a agarrar más estudiantes para llenar más el edificio. Nada más nos vamos a mover. Lo que sí va a significar es que va a haber más espacio para cada clase. Pregunta para el nuevo building. ¿Con los estudiantes para moverse más rápido? ¿Qué nuevos techos? ¿Para que ellos sepan para qué clases van a ir al nuevo edificio? When will the students get their new schedules well, since they're going to be moving into the new building so they know where to go? It's not going to be a new schedule. Um, if anything, it's just a classroom, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of going to room 204, they're going to go to 504. So the, the classrooms will be labeled with the teachers' names. Um, but that's a great idea that we can probably print out a map for them mm -hmm. so that they know. You know I think that was Because question. we have that. Yeah, yeah. We have that information, so we'll probably get that out soon. Mm -hmm. Entonces, la respuesta fue que nosotros lo que vamos a hacer es les vamos a imprimir un mapa. Entonces, prácticamente, si su estudiante le toca ahorita ir al 210, la única diferencia va a ser cambio de, de número. 
entonces en el nuevo edificio va a ser 405 o algo así. Pero nosotros le vamos a dar un mapa para que ellos sepan exactamente sí, dónde va a ir. Están nerviosos porque dicen, no sabemos dónde van a ir. Me, me, me dieron nervios que se que los pero nosotros, ah, de eso no se tiene que preocupar todos, nosotros prácticamente vamos a estar ahí dirigiendo esos primeros días. Y ese primer día vamos a tener una celebración para... para And that day we will have a celebration. <laughs> welcome. Are we having the, the, the tour before it opens or after? No, for the parents it'll be after. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, was gonna say, can be that. I don't know that we're going to give them a tour, but I think that's a great idea. That's something we can bring mm -hmm. up. Just look for their number. Yeah. 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 There'll be tons of staff making sure yeah. all the kids get to where they need yeah. to go for sure like the first day of kids oh with yeah the, with the little ones we understand yeah. they might be a little nervous we understand that but there'd be plenty of stuff yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful building. Yeah. Um, está muy, ya caminamos, unos de nosotros caminamos ahí en el nuevo edificio, está muy bonito. Eh, va a haber suficiente espacio para los estudiantes. Le va a gustar mucho más de cómo estamos ahorita. Yeah. Um, one thing that isn't listed on here, but I know that Miss Arcy has been talking about this, and I've we've thought of different ways to help with breakfast. So when the kids come, a lot of them say they're not hungry or they already ate. So we're having a, a big waste of breakfast. Um, and one thing that we've thought about is possibly maybe what, what they do is they get a milk, they get a fruit, and they, they get like a bread of some sort. So we've thought about maybe splitting it up. Um, a lot of these items are like, I mean, fruit. For example, I went to Sam's Club and there was a parent buying two, or not a parent, a lady bought, buying two things of like pears. And I'm like, we just threw those away, right? So we can't donate them to outside vendors. We can donate them to our parents. So I'm asking for our parents, our families, if there's anything, any ideas that you all have. We've, I've, what I've thought about is maybe making bags of pears, bags of apples, and then offering it to our families. Um, so, but we need help with that. So if we have like, I don't know, I thought about like a breakfast committee of parents that come in every morning and help sort. Because if you look out there, the trash cans are packed with breakfast. They walk in and they dump it in the trash can. And so I... I don't know. We're trying to think of ideas on how to promote this. But so let, let me explain this. When we do um, spread, um, break it up into different, you know, put the bread and the apples or whatever, the kids are hungry. They will come throughout the day. And by the end of the day, those bins are empty. So, but it is so much of it that I don't know. There just, just has to be some kind of. I have a question. Then do let, let all... me translate that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ah, lo que está, lo que estaba diciendo ahorita, eh, tenemos un problema o algo que está sucediendo que es todas las mañanas. Yo estoy en la, eh, a ver enfrente también cuando entran los estudiantes se le da el desayuno. El desayuno prácticamente viene una leche, una pera, una manzana y un tipo de pan. Entonces los estudiantes no sabemos exactamente cómo la tienen. Exactamente no sabemos por qué los estudiantes no comen en la mañana. Nada más tiran todo, tiran todo, tiran todo. Y tenemos como seis contenedores llenos de pura, de pura comida. Lo que estamos haciendo es que estamos dividiendo los panes, que estamos dividiendo las, las frutas. Y, pero al final del día vienen y agarran de comer. Entonces nos, nosotros les queríamos preguntar a ustedes como padres, Uh, si nos pueden ayudar, ¿qué, qué haríamos o qué harían ustedes en esas, en esas circunstancias? Uh, a lo mejor sería poner las, unas bolsas de frutas, unas bolsas de panes y que ustedes nos ayudarían. Uh, o, es, el problema que tenemos es que los, los estudiantes nada más pasan y los tiran a la basura, pasan y tiran a la basura, pasan y tiran a la basura, pero al final en unas dos, tres horas están, tienen hambre. Ese es el problema que tenemos. Entonces, si hay una sugerencia de los padres para nosotros, ¿en qué, qué, qué podemos hacer? ¿Qué podemos hacer para eso? ¿Es posible que tenga un bin? Bueno, sé que ustedes tienen que tener probablemente packages, pero ¿es posible que tengan un bin o 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 un bin Yeah, because then by the end of the day, you'll have like three stacks of fruit and like and our nurse, half of a stack of like conchas. Our nurses like do um, take like apples and put them in the nurse's yeah. office and kids come in there when they're 
hungry. So it's going. But if even if we could share it with our families, our parents that do want to take pears home and apples home. I know Ms. Ferris takes apples to her horses sometimes. So. Entonces, la, la plática ahorita es, ¿qué, ¿qué podemos hacer? Hay unas... A lo mejor podemos poner los panes en un lado, las frutas en un lado. A lo mejor los padres pueden venir y si tenemos suficientes panes y suficientes frutas, usted se puede llevar los panes y las frutas. Sí. Este, les quería hacer esa pregunta. ¿Esa comida la tiran ustedes a la basura o...? Do we throw that food away in the trash or what do we do with that? Yeah, we no, las, no las podemos donar. We cannot donate it. No um, las podemos donar, pero usted puede venir y puede agarrar. Pero a las familias sí las a podemos familias donar. De nosotros, Pero sí que decidir a dejarlas a Homeless Shelter, we cannot. O donarlas a otras Porque organizaciones, no se puede. a mí me han dado las muchachas, esto es lo que los muchachos uh -huh. agarran. Y pues, como me han visto ahí, pues, yo sí comparto con mis vecinos ahí. Que no, y está familia, bien. Ya saben, ancianos, que yo les llevo. Incluso sí, a las señoras que están ahí en la parada, las que pasan a los niños en la mañana, contestas a ellas, que hay desgracias. Porque la verdad, de, para mí, es un desperdicio y se han sacado el niño que sí le realmente esa comida. Deberíamos unos padres de ir a clasificar esa comida para ver de si nosotros como padres, porque en la mañana se acercó una madre ahí diciendo de que un hermano es un y necesita esa comida. Se acercó a la muchacha y le pidió y le dieron, y así hay mucha gente que necesita. Si los estudiantes no se están comiendo la comida, nosotros como padres debemos ver. ¿Qué productividad tiene esta comida? Eh, exactamente, por eso estamos teniendo esta junta ahorita, porque queremos nosotros como escuela saber, no queremos nosotros que tampoco se desperdicie esa comida y que nada más. We don't want that food just to go and waste. So if somebody else needs it, remember, we can just give it out, but if your parents can come in and get some food, get some extra food, and if you want to give it to somebody else, that's something else. So I have a suggestion. If we are able to take the food that is not being consumed and putting bins throughout the day around campus for students just between passing periods, oh, we do. whatever, right? And one parent or a few parents can come after school, grab everything, and then go distribute. There's hundreds of homeless people, hundreds. And we as parents could do that. Every day, one parent will just, after school, come, grab the food that is not being consumed, and then distribute. Okay. So those are all great suggestions. There's a couple here, too, as well. Um, after school, you guys should have the bins in the Champion Center in the middle school gate for anyone to get whatever they want. Can students leave it in their first period classroom or allow other students throughout the day to grab it, fruit or bread? So all these things are great suggestions. I think it's a matter of... Um, the manpower, right, who's going to come and help and sort it out. Um, we personally cannot deliver to the homeless. It is a liability and we're, we're not supposed to. However, if you take it, then we're not, we're no longer right liable. liable for it. So I think it's a great idea of putting in the bins here. Um, muchas, muchas ideas muy buenas. Idea de los padres, ideas a través de la, de la internet que nos están dando. Lo que nosotros necesitamos como escuela básicamente es los voluntarios que nos ayuden a que esas ideas se hagan, like, se hagan Posible, right? Posible. Ms. R.C., did you have... Uh, I was going to say, maybe even creating, like, a share table, even, like, back here, and because, you know, the students are here in the Champion Center for a dismissal, and a lot of the parents come in and pick them up, and we can have bags there, and they can grab yeah. whatever they want on the way out. So we did have um, share tables... Um, since the beginning of matter, but with COVID, it kind of just was like, okay, no more sharing. Um, but I think it's something that we could definitely look into and get it started. But I love the idea of the bins and having them here, especially during pickup, right? Because it's packed in here. Yeah. So even if students wanted to grab and go. Um, so I love all this, right? Great suggestions. Is it, is it possible, sorry, but no, no, you're yeah. is it possible, I know you guys are talking about this here, but what about having a bin in the classroom? So I don't know if you guys are able to have that because throughout the day, I'm just thinking because of, I know my kid, my kid's constantly eating. They said throughout the day, can you just pick me up or? Yeah, I think um, I think it needs to start with that initial um, distribution of it all being separated from the beginning so that if teachers did, I mean, and we could even provide them with a little basket if teachers wanted to come in and grab, you know, grab from whatever's in the hallway or whatever and take it to their classroom to have available. I think it's just creating a system and having the parent volunteers and 
can get I, it going. I can come every morning because I'm here. What would be if I would want to be a volunteer? Like around what time would be good to come? Does it have to be right away in the morning or what? I would time? say let us come up with a system first. Okay. I think let us come up with a system first. ¿Qué tiempo estaba pensando usted? Porque ustedes vienen a los niños y no, o sea, no está bien que vayan a la casa y luego regresen, sino que ya que están aquí, que ayudan. Yo cualquiera ese mismo rato, yo los tengo a dejar, yo me quedo si me necesitan para clasificar, para clasificar. Yeah, and and we've suggested that we actually just bought them a um a, a juicer for yeah. the oranges so they can make oh, fresh squeeze in the morning or something. Exactly. So it, I think or it's after. just a matter of somebody taking the lead right on both ends, parent side, our side, yeah. culinary side. But yeah, that's definitely something that has been suggested. Uh, la, la idea también que dijo las señoras que como nosotros tenemos aquí un programa de culinaria, o para que los estudiantes se aprendan a cocinar, que también esas, esas peras o esas manzanas se les pueden dar a ellos para que hagan algún tipo de comida, se les puede vender a los estudiantes. Y luego recaudan fondos para ese programa de culinaria. Y también tenemos una hospitalidad, así que eso también se incorpora, porque ellos están acostumbrados a eso. Sí. Bien, creo que vamos a terminar de cerrar, a menos que tengamos más preguntas, sugerencias. Uh, ¿Alguna otra pregunta? ¿Algo más? ¿Algún comentario ya para terminar? Muchas gracias por su participación. Yes, thank you. And then we'll be sending out that survey just to get a little more feedback from um, everyone, our parents, so that we can best um, choose the time that works for everyone. Vamos a, a mandar una encuesta a todos los padres para que nos digan a qué hora sería mejor si quiere ser voluntario. Y ya cuando tengamos una idea de lo que queremos hacer, usted ya puede escoger, oh, quiero venir en la mañana a estas horas, quiero venir a las tardes a estas horas, para que esa comida sí no se desperdicie. No se les ok, so our next pick meeting is November 2nd, and we'll see everybody then. La siguiente junta sería noviembre 2, por favor no se la pierda. Noviembre 2, nos vemos en esa fecha. Tenga buen día. Tenga buen día.